Last night late, I was waiting for some uh, stuff to boil off, and uh, I got the idea to make what you're looking at here. And so what this is is just a DIY, 100% uh, self-contained, meaning that uh, it's an all-in-one. It's got the filter and the uh, uh, catching vessel. Uh, basically for vacuum filtration um, and all it is is you can see it is a pickle jar and I drilled a hole right here in the lid and I stuck I had these uh, polyethylene high density high density polyethylene uh, T joints already I wanted to use an elbow joint uh, but I had these on hand so I ended up using this I just stuck that down in there and I uh, so I just made the hole just big enough so that uh, when these little flanges or flares go down in the hole, uh, just the first one, so the hole is big enough so that when it gets to the top of the first one, so the widest point, it makes a seal right there, and that's airtight without anything else on it. Um, and I ended up, uh, after I put this on there and I used it, I liked the fact that I had this T instead of an elbow because then what I did was put a piece of latex tubing on here with a pinch clamp to seal it off. Uh, but what's kind of nice about this though is that so when you're filtering and then you want to wash whatever is in the filter, um, generally you want to turn the vacuum off uh, so that you can swirl everything around and kind of wash it and, and stir it up before you start to filter it again. And so that means turning off the vacuum, and sometimes the vacuum is uh, a little ways away from where you're working with the filter. And so with this, all you do is you take the pinch clamp off, and it releases the vacuum. Um, so then you can, you know, work up here in this, not have to worry about going to cut the power off. And when you're done rinsing, you just, you know, clip it back up. Uh, and the other thing that's nice about this, too, is I made it so that this is a number six and a half rubber stopper here. Uh, as you can see, if I turn it the right way here, you could probably see it better. Yeah, so I wrote it on there just so I know what it is. Um, and so, uh, yeah, number six and a half stopper. And as you can see, you can remove the funnel on the stopper. And uh, you can put any other funnel you want in this. So if you've got a traditional Buchner funnel, you can stick that right in here. Um you know anything basically as long as it fits uh in the bore of the cork you have then you're unlimited um so this is you know a real simple contraption um uh, i'll take the lid off so you can see the last little thing that i did here um uh, and so uh you can see i put teflon tape it's it's kind of torn up a little bit because i've screwed this off and on a couple of times uh so i'll need to touch that up and if you make one of these for yourself and you use this as a sealer, uh, you know, you'll need to do the same thing. Um, it's probably not necessary. I'm sure that I would get a decent enough seal without it. I just figured I had some on hand, so I was going to use it. So I put that on there just to try to get a little bit better of a seal. And voila. C'est ça. That's it. Fini. Um... Last thing of any merit I should mention then is how I did the lid. So I just uh, used a, um, a bit guide and stuck my uh, elbow or T-joint in there to figure out what size drill bit I needed for this hole. And this hole here, so what I did was is I just uh, took the stopper. I'll take it off the funnel here so you can see what I'm doing. So... I just took the stopper, as you can see, and I put it like this. You can see there, it fits perfect. And I uh, marked around it. No, actually, hold on, back up. What I did first was, is I actually, I came from this way. I decided where I wanted to have the center of my hole, okay? And so I made the center of the hole and the majority of the hole with one of these guys right here. This is a one inch step bit. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can use a regular drill bit and then ream the hole out because the step bit wasn't quite big enough to accommodate the stopper. And um, that's the smallest stopper I can get a funnel into. 
So uh, I had to use my Dremel with a uh, drum sander attachment on it. And after I drilled the center punch and used these step bits here, this is a little Milwaukee pack I picked up. Um, I believe I got this at Home Depot for less than 20 bucks. And uh, so it's got in it for 20 bucks. You get two step bits and a little assortment of drill bits there. So you make your pilot holes for the step bits. However, these are self-tapping in metal. So it's not necessary to use a pilot hole. Anyhow, uh, so drilled my pilot hole, which was an inch big. And so this whole hole here is probably maybe an inch and a quarter to inch and three-eighths in total diameter. So anyhow then, so after then, I used the step bit and got the hole as big as I could that way. Then I put this guy on there, traced around it. And to get the hole as big as I needed it to, then I used my Dremel and sanded this out. Um, and then that's it. If you don't have a, a stopper that's got a nice big hole in it like that, you're going to need to bore it out. And I recommend just buying yourself a decent set of cork borers. Uh, they're the easiest way to bore out a stopper like this, a rubber stopper. Um, and... Uh, you know, you just got to bore it out big enough to get your funnel in there. Make sure your funnel makes a good seal, like so. And then uh, put it all back together. And you have, essentially, an all-in-one portable device that you can use for vacuum filtration. And it works for gravity filtration, too. You just either unhook uh, the nipple here from the vacuum so that you can get air behind everything or you can leave it connected to the vacuum and if you're using the T like I did disconnect the pinch clamp and gravity filtration will go through uh, quite nicely so that's it for this video I just wanted to show you guys uh, something that I came up with that I did and it, I'll tell you what it works great it works just as well as my uh, Buchner funnel that I bought um, and you know, I kind of actually, uh, have been using this, uh, since then, uh, more than any of my other funnels when I'm doing filtrations, just because of the fact that it's got the container, you know, built right onto it. I don't have to worry about getting a filtering flask out or hooking up a jointed flask to a filtering flask or, or I mean, a, a jointed funnel I meant to a filtering flask or any of that stuff. So it's nice. Uh, hope this is useful to some of you, and uh, if there's any questions, uh, feel free to uh, leave it in the comments and I will get back to you, and uh, I don't think there should be though, I think I explained it fairly well. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed, see you next time.